After a failed animal experiment at Eastern Virginia Medical School, PETA offered sanctuary for the baboons used. What happened to the baboon shows how evil experimentation can be and why the school must be shut down. Next, on The PETA Podcast with Emil Guillermo. Welcome to The PETA Podcast. I'm Emil Guillermo your host for this inside look at animal rights, brought to you by PETA, the largest animal rights organization in the world. On today's episode, protesters are outside Eastern Virginia Medical School demanding answers. Why did the school reject PETA's offer to provide sanctuary for female baboons, tortured in useless experiments? The school was already in trouble for violations of the Federal Animal Welfare Act But instead of giving up the baboons to PETA, the school and one of its experimenters, Gerald Pepe, killed the four female baboons. That's right, given an option to save the baboons, the school and vivisector Pepe killed the four mother baboons, Gemma, Cookie, Toya, and Tara. PETA Senior VP Daphne Nakminovich talks with me about what the school and Gerald Pepe did and the need for the lab and its experiments to be shut down on The PETA Podcast with Emil Guillermo. Tell me about this Eastern Virginia Medical School, EVMS, and where is it? What are they doing to baboons? So Eastern Virginia Medical School is here in Norfolk, Virginia, where PETA happens to be headquartered. They are literally a stone's throw away from us across the river. And they, there is an experimenter there named Gerald Pepe, who has been torturing and recently killing uh, female mother baboons and their babies in horrific pregnancy experiments. And these experiments, uh, how long has he been doing them? And have, have they made a difference to human beings, to animals, to science? Has he had an impact? So he, believe it or not, this has been going on since 1980. Hmm. So 44 years of baboon torture and horrific psychological and physical suffering. And as far as we know, it has not resulted in any benefit whatsoever to people, uh, women, and or their babies, uh, these baboons' lives, or I, I can't even frankly call them lives, these baboons' existence has been nothing but fear and pain and terror and distress. And so talk about what these experiments are about, what, what they do precisely to the baboons. This experimenter, Pepe, who's now 81 years old, has been since 1980 injecting, impregnating the baboons and then subjecting them to cesarean or C-sections. He was doing multiple C-sections and multiple pregnancies on on some of these baboons. And recently um, he got in trouble because the federal government told him that he couldn't do additional multiple, uh, I'm sorry, additional major survival surgeries, i.e. C-sections on five specific baboons, Alyssa, Gemma, Cookie, Toya, and Tara. And so um, that's what really brought this to light is that there were some critical violations, direct violations, repeat violations of animal welfare laws and regulation. He's impregnating baboons with baboon semen, I presume. I mean... Well, I, I think they were breeding... I think that they were... You know, I don't know how the breeding occurred, but Mm -hmm. the baboons were either subjected to male baboons uh, or he or they were artificially inseminated. I don't know the details of that. He I know that he was um, cutting the babies out of them at various stages of pregnancies in order to, quote unquote, study the tissue. And we also know that he was injecting, you know, part of this is studying the effect of estrogen um, on, on the baboons and their pregnancies. So he was injecting these animals with a drug known to cause, uh, seizures and other issues, um, which was also p- part of the, the, re- one of the baboons suffered a, a bad reaction to this, 
um, and did not receive adequate care under the Federal Animal Welfare Act. So this was also exposed through a USDA, United States Department of Agriculture, uh, inspection report. You're not supposed to do this unless you have an exception. They they have an exception or they uh, Pepe got an exception to do these procedures or not? So he was doing it without the exception. OK, then he asked for the exception. He got the exception. The exception was for specific baboons. It wasn't just a hey, yes, you can do it. And but they came back and said, you can have the exception if you follow these, if you comply with these. Uh, guidelines. And then he failed to comply with the guidelines and then they rescinded the exception. So the USDA regulates it as does the National Institutes of Health Office of Laboratory Animal Welfare. And both offices expressed concern about the welfare of these baboons. The thing is that PETA, when we learned about this, we did a lot of Freedom of Information Act requests uh, and started bringing this to light publicizing it on our website, getting press on it, getting headlines um, here in Virginia about it. And so we found out, we, we had offered, yeah, I should say that, you know, as a result of the fact that the USDA rescinded the exception and these baboons were not going to be used in additional survival surgeries, we offered to place them in a sanctuary. So they survived whatever he did, exception or not, the the female baboons, and you named them. So did, did Pepe name him, or do you know how they got their names? Right. So actually, the laboratory refers to them by numbers, but we did also, the records that we got indicated that they did have names. So I named Alyssa, Gemma, Cookie, Tor Tara, and Toya. And so there were five. Alyssa uh, died after her second C-section last March 2023, um, immediately after her C-section, it's unclear. She essentially died of aspiration. Um, so it's unclear if she ever even woke up from the procedure, but she died. She had lost 18% of her body weight, which is something that was noted by the federal inspectors. And um, EVMS altogether failed to address the fact that this baboon had lost 18%, 18% of her body weight. Wow. And he still subjected her to a pregnancy in a C-section, and she didn't survive. The other four um, survived until very recently when he killed them. Wow. All right. So we're going we're gonna to get to that. The USDA went in once the publicity started picking up. What did the agency actually do to try to stop Pepe from, from doing these, uh, these uh, procedures? Right. So I should be clear that the USDA actually... The USDA is a is a machine that moves very very slowly, and the initial uh, violations in involving these experiments actually go back a few years. So the USDA cited EVMS for the violations. There was the 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 granting of the exception, and then the rescind the rescinding the exception. That just happened in the last year. I don't know that I would say they quote unquote went in. They essentially had an extensive correspondence because EVMS, believe it or not, um, really appealed every violation, argued with um, the USDA, even implied that the veterinary medical officers at the USDA just didn't understand the experiment because it was so quote unquote complex. These are veterinary medical officers who conduct these inspections and um the the response was you know they read they read your protocol and they understood your protocol but there is no scientific justification you failed to comply with the caveats that were given to you when the exception was granted so the exception is rescinded and that's it um yeah, yeah, that you know, was just in August 2023 wow so you're not kidding it's 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 a slow process but it makes it sound like the bureaucracy has a built-in bias to allow for these experiments to happen. A thousand percent. Absolutely. And in fact, while I will, um, I'll give kudos to the USDA for actually doing this because it's unheard of for them to do, to take this kind of action. At the end of the day, these baboons didn't get the help that they needed. You know, these baboons were trapped in a cold metal Barren cage at, at the EVMS laboratory, uh, like the many baboons that preceded them, they were in limbo, 
And ultimately, while he faced um, some humiliation due to the violations that the USDA found, when it's all said and done, he tortured and killed these baboons. The baboons ultimately The only thing I can say, if we're going to try to be positive about this, is that I'm thankful that they're no longer suffering in a cold laboratory cage waiting for the next poke, prod, or cut, or what I'm sure they saw as torture when a human approached the cage that they were confined in. So Pepe was essentially stopped by the USDA. What did PETA do when PETA tried to save the baboons? Just to be clear, I mean, Pepe was stopped from doing it to these baboons. They didn't tell him he couldn't do it to other baboons, right? Mm, So he was stopped for these five, then four baboons. And when it became clear that these four baboons who were 18 years old, so really is like a a woman in her late 60s or or 70s, you know, these are elderly gals, you know? Mm. I mean, were they they able to bear... Bare ba- young baboons. I mean, were they still? I mean, they don't have a. T- do they have the same kind of biological clock as? Well, as apparently not, because he was still yeah. getting some pregnancies out of these elderly baboons, unfortunately. But yeah. you know, the 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 a record we received recently. You know, the way that it was couched is that they basically blamed the baboon for not getting pregnant or her failure mm. to. You know, which right. is just outrageous. But anyway, <laughs> um, Peta offered to take these baboons and place them in a sanctuary and the sanctuary was standing by to receive them. And we made that offer. I had personally engaged Virginia state legislators on this matter going back to to January when legislative session starts. And we started shedding light on this experiment. We started talking to legislators. We talked to the press. So we started exposing what was going on behind closed doors at EVMS and um, we, in, in fact, add legislation, which was just signed by Governor Yunkin to implement some trans, some steps towards transparency and publicly funding found, funded animal testing facilities like EVMS. So we offered to, to, to place these baboons in a reputable sanctuary where they would, for the first time ever, have some semblance of a life where they would enjoy uh, the sunshine, perhaps being outside, you know, they were never outside, uh, not being caged and, uh, or at least having some room to roam, not living in total fear 24 seven. And you were ready to offer a sanctuary. You had a place to take these baboons. EVMS, Eastern Virginia medical medical school knew about this offer that was on the table. I, I, I presume, uh, Absolutely. Pepe, Pepe knew. Pepe knew about this offer on the table. I'm sure he did. Absolutely. I mean, we this was a you know a, a very clear offer. We had written to EVMS. We wrote to their board of visitors. This was in the press, and it was it was very obvious and very clear. There was so, no mystery. <laughs> so the the ball was in their court to 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 do the right thing and release the baboons to PETA. Yes, and they could have released the baboons directly to the sanctuary if they felt that PETA was you know, not the party they wanted to release them to. Um, they could have they could have done this any they could have done it as quietly. All we wanted was for these baboons to have an opportunity to to have a you know a bit of sunshine in their golden years. So you were fully expecting the compliance on the part of EVMS and Pepe. Well what happened? Well we were certainly hopeful you know, because why would you say no, right? You're not going to use these animals. Their usefulness to you, their viability is over. Why would you not want them to have a positive end to their lives? So we were certainly hopeful. And we found out just last week, actually, through a public records request that all four of them, uh, Gemma, Cookie, Tara and Toya were killed, and uh, two of them were killed on February 13th, which was after we began lobbying on this issue, and two of them were killed on March 21st, which was after we had written to EVMS. You know, there's no question that the offer was on the table, and so we've been really working to get answers. EVMS has not responded to us. We wrote to their board of visitors, which is a body that governs their 
operations. And we got one response that said, thank you for sharing your concerns, but no one has looked well, into it. They didn't want to talk, but but let me get this straight again. It seems that at least two were killed back in February. Was the offer on the table in February to release uh, the four baboons? So at that time, we began to talk about the experiment and the violations. We hadn't yet reached the EVMS, but we did start talking about the violations and the fact that these baboons were there sitting in a lab in limbo and that we would wanted to have them released to a sanctuary. And that was, you know, that was in January. James, so, so, so they knew that there was this movement to try to save these baboons, give them a, a life. And it seems absolutely. that and by your chronology, there was there were two that were killed in February, and then there were at least two more. And without any kind of communication with PETA, they just yeah. summarily. Yep. And, you know, the thing is, I will say, too, that, you know, even if the official offer had not been extended, mm -hmm. we have been corresponding, one-sided correspondence with them going back years because we wrote to them after, you know, after the violations and asked them to end these experiments. And, you know, it's just silence. And there was an article in, a, in an outlet here in Virginia called the Virginia Mercury and the Virginia Mercury reporter called EVMS and her article says repeated calls to EVMS went unanswered. So it seems that it's their MO to just bury their head in the sand and wait for the storm to pass. Well, we're PETA, we're across the street, and we're not going away. Well, what strikes me is, I mean, it sounds more evil than innocent. It sounds like there was no real interest in the welfare of the baboons. Well, he's been torturing and killing other baboons for decades. I mean, he has no interest in the welfare of the baboons. All of the documentation that we've ever gotten, these baboons are basically, you know, vessels to him. They're not living, breathing, sentient beings. This man has his whole career. He's 81 years old. His whole career has been about torturing and killing mother baboons and their babies. And he had an opportunity, you know, in his 80s to do the right thing, and he failed. So shame on him and shame on EVMS for allowing this to continue and not responding to a very courteous, polite, and reasonable request from, uh, you know, their neighbor, essentially, but also an organization that, you know, we, we are a, there was no reason for them to just ignore these offers and, and our correspondence, you know. I'm just having a hard time understanding the actions of Pepe because it sounds like it's real, a real example of, of the evil that, you know, is characterized in his work. I mean, it doesn't sound, it sounds like uh, he did it to spite PETA. I don't know whether he did it to spite PETA, but it certainly seems as if he did. And I, I want to also mention, because it's been weighing on me and breaking my heart, is that these baboons, you know, we're talking about these animals. Um, may they rest in peace. Honestly, you know, we this has been going on for, for 44 years. These baboons, these four girls were 18 and um, some of them had been at EVMS, you know, for some of their time. And some of them had been at other facilities. And, um, and you know, you think about your life and all the things you get done in a day. You get up, you have breakfast, you have your cup of coffee, you go, you have lunch, you go to bed, you have your glass of wine. These animals spent 24-7 for the last decade plus confined to a cold metal barren cage alone. And they suffered so much distress that some of them were subjected to a second experiment to reduce self-injurious behaviors, which was referred to in the EVMS records as SIB, because they were so distressed, they were pulling out their own hair, they're biting at the cage bar so much that they damaged their own teeth. Some of them had genital tears. Some of them were missing fingertips. Some of them had pulled out their own fingernails. You know, these animals suffered tremendously and so to, to so for me you know the fact that this man had an opportunity at the end of all this after being cited by the federal government which is you know that's doesn't happen a lot to say you know 
at the very least, I could do this small thing for these four victims of mine. And he just killed them instead. That is evil. It's almost like he was trying to, uh, you know, get rid of the evidence or I I, I don't know, but it it doesn't sound like he's speaking or communicating with with PETA. Uh, Neither is EVMS. And so what is the thought that maybe with this one last act by by Pepe and EVMS that the lab is shut down and that the experiments are over for good? I mean, the man's 81. Is he is he done? I hope so. We don't have any sort of assurance that he's done. We don't have a, a sign of life from EVMS. We just we just know that these baboons are dead. There are no baboons at this laboratory right now, but we are not given any assurance that the laboratory is shut down. The experiment is over. We just know from the records that he killed these four girls. And what's the next step? How does PETA get the confirmation of what what the future will be if the lab is shut down or if the lab continues? Well, we're certainly going to be following up. We have some plans in the works for um, to bring more attention to this online and in the local paper. And we're, you know, probably going to end up planting ourselves in front of the facility with a few signs next week. We want to tell their stories. Their stories need to be told, and they deserve to have their stories told. And, um, you know, you just wish you could tell them that they won't be forgotten. And the stories you're referring to, Gemma, Cookie, Toya, and Tara. Yes, I think their stories need to be told, and I think people need to wake up to the fact that this is animal experimentation. And whether these animals are baboons or dogs or cats or mice or rats, you know, they suffer just the same. Um, Humans, some humans happen to relate more to to non-human primates, but these animals all suffer terribly. They all suffer fear and pain and distress and loneliness and deprivation. And I think that these baboon stories, um, from what I've seen when I've talked to legislators and others, who don't know anything about animal rights or vivisection, that they're really moved and upset by what these baboons suffered. And this is animal experimentation, period. And what are the people who you talk to at the legislature there in Virginia, what are they saying about this Transparency Act? And what what is what can that do if it is passed to help end experimentation in Virginia? I think that it's very premature to talk about the end. I, I like your ambition. Um, but uh, this is a work, essentially the bills, which started as something else uh, because of resistance and actual very strong opposition and lobbying by publicly funded universities in Virginia, including EVMS, who spoke against the original version of these bills. The bills were turned into um, a task force So the creation or convening of a task force to study deficiencies in uh, transparency at publicly funded animal testing facilities, because we have been saying for years, taxpayers fund your existence. How many animals do you have? How much money do you spend on animal versus non-animal research? This is basic information. Surely you have it, but they don't want to share it. So We've made the case. I think we resonated with some legislators. There was a lot of negotiation and compromise, but the bills, and they were signed by the governor, is two bills, but they are the same bill. One is the House, one is the Senate. The bills uh, passed. Um, They passed. They had bipartisan support. They had bipartisan sponsorship, and the governor signed them three days ago on Monday, which was the last day, the deadline. And the work, the task force does not yet been convened, but what we hope it will accomplish is identify deficiencies and make recommendations to the legislator on how to increase transparency in our publicly funded animal testing facilities. And by transparency, it just means if you're going to do something evil or if you're going to do something that is torturous or that threatens the lives of these living sentient beings, it should be out in the open, right? Is that Absolutely. Well, and then this transparency that we're talking about is just basic data. 
How many animals do you have? How many animals do you have? How many animals do you use? How much money of taxpayer money do you spend on animal experimentation? This is simple stuff. This is one, two, three, A, B, C. We're not asking them to change anything. We wanted to have, after the FDA Modernization Act passed, we wanted to have a, a starting point. Let's find out how many animals are we using? How much money are we spending? Let's revisit that and find out, look at this again on a yearly basis. But they don't want to give us that information. So we pushed hard enough to get at least this task force. And we're celebrating that. It's the best we could do. <laughs> this, this is good for Virginia. Maybe in other states they can adopt this. What, what can listeners who are taken by the stories of Gemma and Cookie and Toya and Tara, what can they do uh, to make sure that EVMS uh, does not start up again and that Gerald Pepe, is, is his torturous career is over? Yeah, join us on PETA.org. Come and visit with us on PETA.org if you want to see um, specifically what EVMS is doing, you just PETA.org slash Virginia, and you will see our EVMS page and a, a, a list, a long list of their violations and certainly our action alert and how you can take action to get some answers on what these baboons suffered. Well, Daphna, thank you again for being part of the PETA podcast. Thank you for having me. Daphna Nekminovich, PETA Senior VP on Eastern Virginia Medical School and the baboons killed there, despite the fact that PETA had offered sanctuary for the four female baboons. And that's our show for today. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to send a link of this show to your friends. Tell them you like the PETA podcast. You can contact us at PETA.org. You can find me on Twitter at Emil Amuk, or see my vlog at AMOK.com, or see my work at ALDEF, the Asian American Legal Defense and Education Fund, that's ALDEF, A-A-L-D-E-F dot org slash blog. Or see my one-man show, Emil Amuck, Lost NPR host and other monologues at the New York City Fringe Festival. That's uh, this April, this month. Or go to frigid.nyc and look for Emil Amuck. Or also go to amuck.com slash tickets for more information. Also, the Orlando Fringe Festival, I'll be there in May. And get this podcast on YouTube at Emil Amuck One. Once again, thank you for listening. Check out all our episodes on your favorite podcast app or on Apple Podcasts, where you can subscribe to as well as rate and review the show. It helps get the word out about the issues you care about. The music is provided by Carbon Works. When it's there, check them out on YouTube. And join us again next time for more insight into animal rights and the fight for a cruelty-free world on the PETA Podcast. I'm Emil Guillermo.